Hey YouTube, hey everybody, I'm uh, going to show you some great luck I've had. If you watch some of my videos, I find a lot of cool stuff at thrift stores. I've made a lot of uh, videos lately on photography and cameras, uh, things like that, and I've shown some cameras. I, I did a video called uh, Goodwill Photo Hunting where I got some cameras incredibly cheap. Some of them I actually re-donated because of various issues. Um, I've gotten, I did one on vintage camera shopping where I kind of anecdotally uh, related how I uh, got, got other cameras and, and what I needed to do to uh, fix them or whatever. Well, guess what? In, in just a space of one week at one thrift store, and by the way, don't in your comments ask me where this is. I'm kind of going to keep it my little secret because it's been such a great source of, of great stuff it's stuff that I actually buy and use not stuff that I'm trying to flip for a, a quick profit and the reason why I'm making this video too I'm not bragging or nothing about you know the stuff I get but I I want to encourage people to um, bypass these these pickers you know the ones that you know fill up these thrift stores on Saturday and Sunday afternoons that and then they find stuff and then they put it on eBay and they think they're gonna get rich or something well you know it's I think it's better to, to, to find look for something that you that you want to buy and use and that you actually have to do some of the work to uh, refurbish and realize especially if you if you get something that's a really good good item or whatever and we're we're going to talk about these cameras here and some accessories. Like I said, I, I made three visits to the same store within one week and I, I brought all this stuff uh, back. Um, this is also a lead into a video um, that I'm going to make on how to, how to detail and clean and refurbish um, film cameras. I, I've been doing a lot of surfing on YouTube and you see so many videos, it's like, you know, it's pretty easy to learn how to load film into a, a, a 35 millimeter camera. There's so many videos on that, but I haven't found any videos uh, that depict what I'm going to show you, um, what I'm going to do after I finish this video. Uh, but uh, tell you what, let's just get into it here. I'll, sh I'll relate. Um, what I found and I still have the price tags on most of this stuff and what I've learned what another thing I would uh, recommend is uh, I've already mentioned this in another camera type video um, a great source for finding instruction manuals online that you can just download and print for free although the you can donate to this person who, who has a site up because he's such a great source uh, for instruction manuals, but uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's get into these cameras here one by one. Okay, the first uh, lot of stuff I'm going to show you, I found this um, at the store. They have a like a glass display case, and they have like they also have like a like a plastic tub of other cheaper cameras that I used to like dig through. Um, but they have those are mostly the cheaper plastic kind of point and shoot kind of cameras that don't have any real much value uh, but but I did find this on top of this display case and uh, a while back they used to keep this thing locked and then you'd have to ask the the person for the key to look for certain things on display well now they don't even do that. You can just kind of self-service and, and open it up and examine the stuff, I guess, on your own, and which is kind of nice. I guess they trust trust people now more. But anyway, this was actually on top of that display case out in the open. Um, this is a it's a Nikon EM. Um, it's a kind of automated uh, 35 millimeter SLR. It has what is a uh, kind of a, I would say, it's not an, well, I wouldn't call it a, an economy model, but it was a, a kind of less expensive model line. It has this kind of 
um, Series E lens. The camera is is it's not a really heavy camera, but that doesn't mean it's a cheap, cheapy, flimsy camera. It was actually from what research I've done. Um, it's a it's a very quality uh, made camera. It was probably aimed at um, more of the casual shooter. Um, it's not like uh, it's not in the same level as like the professional um, F series, obviously, or like the FEs or whatever. In fact, one of these cameras is a, is a FE that I'll show you a little later. Uh, but this is someone called this like the Rodney Dangerfield of Nikon's because it's for some reason it's like very super modestly priced. If you look on eBay or if you look on ShopGoodwill.com, you can get one of these really really cheap it seems like like me 20 30 maybe just 40 dollars um, I have a film in it now so I'm not going to demonstrate the operations of it um, it's a aperture priority as you can see it doesn't have many dials and things on it uh, but but the uh, when you look through the viewfinder the the meter needle does have a display of shutter speed so in a way you can choose a shutter speed by um, selecting your lens opening and then watching your needle uh, read out to whatever shutter speed that your camera's automation is going to choose which is kind of nice um, it takes two kind of button size um, silver oxide batteries which I have in here um, here's like a test test button there so you know batteries are good um, it's really kind of a sweet little camera. I mean, it is incredibly small. Back in the, this is I think from the late 70s to early 80s it was made. It's, uh, like I said, it's it's made to be light, but the, from the research I've done, the actual chassis is a kind of a light metal alloy. Um, probably most of these parts are kind of like plastic, but they, they still have a nice solid uh, feel to them. This is actually a 50 millimeter lens. It's although you can see that it's not it doesn't stick out very far. It's what they would call kind of like a pancake uh, lens. So it's and the viewfinder is very bright. Um, it's it has a split uh, prism in the center, so it's easy to uh, focus even in dim light. So all in all, it's a really nice find there. Um, also on the on the top this wasn't really there was no price on this I'll show the price at the end it's on the um, <clears throat> on the the case here uh, but when I got this home I couldn't get the the battery door off and sure enough the batteries had leaked or whatever um, but I was able to um, clean out the battery compartment and I'll show you that in the next video I make where I where I um, show you how to use whatever um, chemicals or whatever you use basically white vinegar will dissolve most of that stuff off of like uh, contacts or whatever but I, I put I did that and I put new batteries in here and this does work I I've taken a few flash pictures so far uh, with this camera <clears throat> So it does work. And in fact, this one will, will, is actually designed to work with this camera and also one of the other cameras uh, that I'm going to show you. Uh, but the best thing about this, oh, by the way, in this case, it came in the case. First, I thought it was a real cheapy uh, camera or whatever because it was in the case. Like I said, it was sitting on top of the, the display case. But uh, the best thing about all this is the price here. It was... Uh, nine dollars and ninety nine cents I mean that is such a cool deal eh? so that's the uh, that's the Nikon EM okay now we're going to show you uh, the next one here okay on I think it was the very next day I stopped at the same store and like I said I probably this this camera is probably there at the same time but I, I just kind of overlooked it or something it was inside the display case uh, but what I found is this Nikon FE FE body and I also found this uh, 
This is a Nikon mount aftermarket lens. It's a Vivitar. And it's in like like new condition. It's a it's a I think what's this a 70 to 210 zoom. I think it's a 4.5 maximum aperture. Uh, but anyway, the the Nike this Nikon I've already started what I call my refurbishing process. It looks not too bad now, but when I first uh, got it, by the way, when I first got it, it didn't have this lens cover. I actually went home because I didn't have enough money on me to buy it. I went home and I and I got this from home. I had one of these extra. This thing was just on display, just like this. It didn't it didn't have any cover on it, and and there's something about this the mirror inside that um that I'll explain that uh, why why you should always keep a a a, a a body cap on on it but anyway I've started the refurbishing process here um and I still have to go over it pretty well I've as you can see the inside is actually pretty good I'll open up the back here I gotta take it off camera so you can see it. Okay. Looks relatively nice. It's a the FE here has a vertical metal blade shutter. Something I've kind of noticed. There's a little bit of I don't know if that's what that is on the on the polished rails. I'm gonna try to remove that if that's some little corrosion or something. I might be able to polish that off. Um, the light seals on this appear to be still intact. I won't really know for sure until I, I shoot a film with it. But I'm gonna do the, the like I said the cleaning process. All the basic functions are working. Um, I don't the the battery compartment had batteries in it. Um, maybe I can just take it open it up real quick. There were batteries in here but they were old and they had started to leak but uh, they haven't really damaged the battery compartment luckily but even if they had that doesn't mean that this thing would would have been ruined um, there's there are things like I said with that like with that flash unit I mentioned with the other camera there are ways to clean that out see that there that still looks pretty good there's just maybe a little bit of that powder stuff around the in, inside but the contacts are are very clean there but like I said I, I got this lens this lens was uh, 1999 pretty good as you can see this this was the lower part of, of the case that it was in um, the upper I didn't realize that the upper part the upper case or the, the other part of the case is still at the store, but I didn't want it. Uh, it was in such crappy condition. But uh, this is what I paid for that body. $29.99. And like I said, this this is in like probably going to be in excellent shape when I'm done with it. Excellent working and excellent uh, cosmetic condition. Um, one thing that I ordered off of eBay, it's a new old stock item. And, and I always want to add these. I, for some reason, I, I always see so many Nikons um, that don't that don't have this on on the uh, eyepiece or the viewfinder. But I ordered a one of these little eyepieces. It's like basically just a plastic ring with a with a clear piece of glass, and that is basically going to go. It threads on to here. But before I do that, I I want to thor thoroughly clean out you know all the dust and crap inside there from inside there so so that's the Nikon FE body and the Vivitar um, 70 to 210 uh, zoom lens there excellent excellent deal okay the next one I want to show you this is a really cool find I didn't know anything about this type of camera I wasn't really a Canon guy as far as film SLRs go. I'm pretty much a Nikon guy, but when I saw this and when I, or the more I learned about this, uh, the more I liked it. And in fact, I got some stuff on order 
uh, from eBay uh, some accessories to go with it but this is the the Canon A1 it's a really high quality um, multi-mode I guess or multi-priority programmable SLR it was made in the in the late 70s maybe to, to the mid 80s uh, correct me if I'm wrong uh, but it is in fantastic condition um, it came with this it's a Kiron, it's an aftermarket uh, short zoom. It's from 30 to 90, I think that's 90 millimeters short zoom lens there. So it covers, you know, all the, all the ideal focal lengths for, you know, any kind of shooting, I would say. It's a nice starter lens, I guess you could say. Uh, maximum aperture, I think, is uh, 4.5. And like I said, I knew nothing about this camera. And when I tried it in, in the store, or tried, I couldn't get the advance to work. I couldn't get the shutter to work. And then I found out later, real re, reason why is it needs a battery um, to actuate those functions. It's a uh, uses electromagnetic uh, shutter, so it's kind of like a. As far as I know, it's, it's like a solenoid or whatever that that's, that uh, runs all this stuff. A switch that allows you to advance the film and things like that. I don't have a film in here right now so I can kind of quickly uh, show you all the basics here. I did buy a battery right away. It takes a variety, it can take a variety of different batteries. I went to Walgreens which I have literally just a stone's throw away. The only, the only one they had in the size I needed was a, a 28L which is a lithium battery. It'll take silver oxide or alkaline uh, batteries of this of, of the size it needs but the lithium was the most expensive I, I would assume and I think it was like 12 bucks but that's that's really not so bad because I know the lithium batteries will last by far the longest. Um, I can kind of quick show you you have to take this off the, the L position which is lock now, now the the power is on basically. See, it's got that really nice click there. And to test the battery, you press this button. And when it blinks really quick like that, that means it's a good battery. If if the battery was was um, running down, the blinking would would be of. Uh, um, longer duration. It would take like slower. It would be basically uh, blinking slower as far as I know. I've, I've already downloaded manuals and that for this camera. I've just really started studying how this camera works. Everything about this is just beautiful. It's um, all the optics, the lens is perfect, the mirror, everything inside is nice and clean. I've actually started the cleaning process. I mean, it already looks like it's mint condition. Um, but the great thing about this is the price here. I left the price. It's uh, $69.99. So that's, I mean, that is, for the condition this thing is in, that's fantastic I, as far as I consider. When I when I bought it this this motor drive was attached um, it had batteries in it they the batteries had started to leak but luckily they they didn't leak and ruin it wreck anything inside the uh, um, battery compartment of this thing I haven't tried this thing yet so I haven't learned how to use it yet but but all in all I'm really kind of excited about this I've um, gone on eBay and I've already ordered a dedicated a flash for this I think it's called a 199A or something it was the best it was the best version of the of the camera mounted um, hot shoe mounted flash dedicated flash I've also ordered a Canon uh, FD uh, 1.4 uh, 50 millimeter lens that's the same vintage as this. It has that the same kind of mounting with this chrome ring. I, I can't recall what that's called, but but it's very easy to mount. You you just basically push the lens on and you turn this ring and it 
it's a bayonet style <clears throat> mount there so it's and what else oh and a I kind of overpaid the but I was really looking for a nice uh, ever ready type case for this and I also ordered one of those too so all that stuff's coming at, from eBay I I plan on keeping this I this is such a cool camera just just to play around with it like I said I haven't put film in it yet I haven't really learned all the functions yet but everything appears to be working perfectly it works as good as it looks so so that's the uh, Canon A1 okay last and not least certainly not least I found this uh, on the day that I'm shooting this this video here um, this was also on top of the display case open um, the top was open and I saw it it said Pentax so I thought oh great maybe it's a K1000 or something but actually, it's, this is actually better, better than a K1000. And I'll open up and I'll show you what I all got here. Uh, first of all, there was some couple of rolls of film that uh, expired in uh, 1994, so they're <laughs> probably no good. I mean, they'd, they'd be good for practice loading and things like that. Uh, but what I found here is a It's a Pentax K2. Now I knew nothing about this camera either, but it's a. I found out it's actually a precursor to the uh, like K1000. In fact, it's it's actually much better uh, than the K1000. If you're familiar with that camera, a lot of people are. Um, this is this one is like unlike the K1000. This is like all metal. Everything on here is metal. I pretty sure even the, the top plates this is metal everything here is metal whereas like the K1000 was much lighter it was lighter than this um, it used a lot of more plastic components whatever but this is I think this goes from this is for me from like the mid 1970s it's got a uh, Pentax lens here a normal like a 15 millimeter 50 millimeter lens here. Um, it's a f f2, so it's it's not the super fast like a f1.2 or something, but it's it's more than adequate for for viewing through, and it's like automatic type. Um, it uh, it reads the light and you can focus at full aperture, and then it's like automatic. So when you actually um, take the picture, it'll stop down to to the lens opening that you really need for the for the correct exposure it it has a match neal light meter inside I haven't put batteries in it um, I opened up the battery compartment the battery compartment is good there were two batteries but I assume that they died years ago but they haven't really they haven't leaked or nothing so I'm pretty confident that uh, this thing should work uh, another funny thing this was actually pulled away here some of the, the this leatherette and I just kind of pulled it back and pressed it back down it it seems to be uh, pretty good now <clears throat> um, and kind of briefly oh, I have to go to, I'm sorry I have to I have to change it to a shutter speed I can't have it on automatic and I have to and there's a lock here too I have to unlock that see it's a nice nice sound there I actually tested the self timer now a lot of people they get all paranoid with these old cameras they think oh what if what if the self timer stops working then your camera's useless or whatever if it stops it doesn't go well this one does work so I usually test it because I like self timers I if I want to take self portraits or whatever or get into the picture with a group um, like I said this one appears to be all metal Here's another neat little accessory. This is a uh, a little cover. If you take like a time exposure or something like that, you want to put this over there so that light does extraneous light doesn't come in uh, through the through the eyepiece and uh, affect your your exposure there. Uh, but that, like I said, this one I haven't really started the cleaning process. It's got a lot of 
dingy stuff, crappy stuff, dirt and whatever around these crevices and things like that. So I have to really go over this one really good. Um, about the only thing I noticed, this is it when I try to adjust the the low opening. It's kind of like a little bit sticky. I don't know if I have to just kind of free that up with use or whatever. See, it's just or just kind of press it in. I don't know. I'm sure I could buy buy another lens, maybe real cheap. These older cameras with older lenses, you can get these a, a good example. Uh, really cheap on eBay, but another thing about eBay, you'll find a lot of stuff that's like maybe like beat up or whatever. I think it pays to get the best. If you're looking for lenses, especially get the best specimens you, you can afford or willing to pay for. Uh, but that's the camera itself. There's more stuff in this bag. <laughs> Like I said, oh, another nice thing, they had these little desiccant gel packets, that, which kind of helps keep uh, things from getting moldy or whatever. Now, in this case, see, I got more stuff in here. These, the filters, I actually have filters on, on here already, but I already have the, these are just the, the uh, cases for the filters. There's, there's a, two UV type filters and a, and a polarizer. Um, this also had the body cap that you put on the body when there's not a lens on there. Um, there's a flash, and this is, I, I'm sure this is like a dedicated flash for this model. Now, this has the same problem that that Nikon flash had that I fixed. I haven't been able to get this door open. And that's probably because the batteries in here have probably leaked and they're probably like stuck together so I this may or may not be um, fixable or salvageable. I'll have to take a knife and pry that that little door off and see what's inside there. So that's the flash that may be good or not good. And here's probably like the best thing. This has got a uh, 135 fixed fixed telephoto lens here it's a pen it's a, it says uh, Tecomar, but it's SHI optical which is Pentax so the, this is made probably designed for this camera it's a it's an excellent excellent condition in fact it's if you can see the shutter or the the blades are probably you know, really nice, works really easily. Even has a little built-in built-in lens shade, which is very cool. It also has a a filter on there. That's the filter from the those little boxes there. So that's that's a 135 fixed length telephoto there. Uh, but like I said, if you haven't seen the price on here, maybe you can see it if I put up. Price for everything in here was $19.99. <laughs> so that's an awesome, awesome deal. So if I get everything uh, cleaned up and working, make sure, you know, new batteries and everything, this would be a nice, a very nice uh, kit to maybe resell down the road. Um, it's nice to have, I'm sure if I was looking for something like this, or if I was like a student that wanted a manual camera with accessories, I would love to get something like this. Of course, what I'm doing here, why I'm making this video, is not, not to sh just show this stuff, but I'm going to actually go to work here and add some value to this. Uh, because maybe the reason why this stuff was donated, someone thought this was non-working junk. Well, it's obviously um, one, per one person's trash is another's treasure. So I'm going to turn this into either my treasure or maybe for someone else down the road. And all I really need is all you really need to do that is some expertise and some time and and it's some enthusiasm and like I said down the road not only am I going to um, refurbish these cameras I'm going to shoot film with them make sure that they work fine that way if if I want to whether I keep them all of them or maybe sell some of them I'll be able to ask uh, top dollar uh, for these things like I'm not like I said I I don't have much of an opinion of 
of these pickers who descend on thrift stores on you know Saturday afternoons and just buy something and don't do anything have no real interest in say cameras or photography but then they put this stuff on eBay and they say oh I don't know I'm not a camera expert blah 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 I don't know if this works I haven't tested it with a battery etc etc and I've like I said I would avoid sellers like that I would really want to buy something uh, from someone who really is into photography and cameras or better yet like me um, shop for something with the idea of fixing it up and using it yourself I mean you, I've gotten some great deals here uh, as you can see but right now I gotta like I wanna go to work right away on one of these uh, that Nikon down there so I hope you uh, appreciated this video and uh, I hope if you wanna see more stuff on photography and cameras like this I hope you uh, subscribe to my channel I I'm one of, I'm probably one of the oldest people I know um, that this seems to be making these kind of videos there's so many um, younger people that that grew up in the digital after digital was pretty well established and now they're discovering all this old what, what many people consider old school uh, photography and you know they're in the, the kind of that hipster <laughs> kind of that hipster kind of attitude of yeah this retro stuff is pretty cool it actually gives you I think better results even than digital these days and and the equipment is actually so so well made too so uh, with that uh, thank you for watching and uh, good luck finding those great cameras and fixing them up